Hi, this is Mike Carter, Carter Custom Knives. Um, I'm often asked about Damascus blades and how they get that pattern on the on the Damascus, and so I just want to uh, explain that a little bit and demonstrate how we etch it to get that pattern. I have some Damascus blades here that we'll be uh, etching in a few minutes, and right now they're ground down, finished ground to. Uh, uh, 400 grit uh, and you really don't see any pattern to it. It just looks like uh, stainless steel. If you look real close in just the right light you might see a little bit of the pattern but after we etch them it'll, it'll be very evident. So um, we're going to be uh, demonstrating this in just a minute. Now the Damascus I use uh, most of the time is made by Brad Weiss of Alabama Damascus and uh, this is actually 416 layers of four different types of metal. Uh, he uses uh, 5160 spring steel, 203E um, nickel alloy, um, 52100 ball bearing steel and 15N20 bandsaw blade steel. So he starts out with uh, 13 layers of those four types of steel and then he folds it five times so you end up with 416 layers and when you etch it you're actually putting it in an acid and the acid will react differently with the different types of metal. It'll eat through some of them more rapidly than others and that's what will give you your pattern. It'll darken some of them more than the others. The nickel won't darken. It'll stay a bright silver looking vein through it. So uh, the more carbon steels will darken down. So, um, And it'll actually, uh, depending on how long you etch it, it'll actually create a texture to it as it, it has actually eaten away some of the uh, layers a little bit. Now to etch it, what, uh, what I use as recommended by Alabama Damascus is a mixture of 60% ferric chloride and 40% white vinegar. And I just use uh, white vinegar available at any grocery store. The etchant I'm using is actually, uh, I bought this online, uh, Micromark. You can use um, PVC etchant from Radio Shack, um, although not all the stores carry it in stock. They can order it for you, but uh, actually I found this was a, uh, a pretty good deal, a uh, good price on it. Um, you can look them up online, uh, Micromark. So what we're going to do is just clean up the blades a little bit, make sure there's no oil or grease on them. Then I'm going to put them in the ferric chloride solution, let them soak for a while, and you'll see that pattern start to come out. The longer you let it soak, the deeper it etches. And then we will neutralize that in a bath of uh, just baking soda and water and, uh, and dry them off. And uh, So you'll see how it goes here. Now, as I said, one thing you want to do is make sure your blades are clean before you etch them. If there's any oil or grease on the blade, um, that part won't etch. So all I'm going to use is just uh, common rubbing alcohol. Uh, it'll remove any oil or grease and not leave any residue. So just give them a quick wipe down with that. Also, you notice on this blade, I did a little file work, so that will uh, give an interesting effect and really stand out after we etch it. Okay, I've got my blades cleaned up here, and now we're going to etch them. Uh, this is my mixture of ferric chloride six, uh, and white vinegar. Uh, do want to wear gloves. You do not want to get this stuff on your hands, on your clothes, or anything else. It is a very caustic acid. Um, and I'm going to show you here just quickly 
how quickly this will start showing the pattern before I submerge the whole blade. I'm just going to dip it for a few seconds here. And immediately, you can start seeing the pattern. Now that's just barely surface etched, so I'm going to put it in and we're going to leave it for probably 15-20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes. Get a nice deep etch on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my blades in here. Again, you can immediately see, start to see what you're going to get. This is a raindrop pattern Damascus, and you can you can already see that. This one is also a raindrop pattern. You can see nothing at all right now. I'm sorry, this is not a raindrop. This is a wave pattern. There's one of my push daggers. And another little push dagger again. You see nothing. Can't see the pattern at all there. And there it is. Now you can see it. Get the light just right. So again, we're just going to let these soak for a while, and I'll stop the video and come back and show you what the results are. Just some notes. Uh, this fluoric chloride mixture will last a long time. I've used it for over a year. I just, uh, you know, keep it, uh, put a lid on it, keep it sealed up. Uh, it will eventually weaken, and... You know, when I mixed up a new batch, you know, I, I was really impressed how much faster it worked. It just kind of slows down over time. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, so we're going to pull them out and see what we've got here. How long you leave them soak in the, in the etchant is just a matter of personal preference. Um, the longer you leave it in, the more it'll etch. Um, 15 to 30 minutes usually gives you a nice, nice deep etch. Uh, I once put one in the bath and forgot about it and went off and left it in there for like five hours. I mean, it, it, it ate that blade up, but uh, <laughs> uh, actually it worked out really nice on that. It went well with that particular knife. I mean, it's the deepest etch I ever saw, but uh, uh, I liked it. And uh, the customer that who bought it obviously liked it too. Now what I'll do is there is a black smudge on this. I like to rinse that off. Just rub it down a little bit. Try not to get my water in my etchant here. So rinse it off and rub it off. See what you got. See if you like it. If you need to, you can put it back in the bath for a few more minutes. But uh, I think that one's looking uh, really nice. Nice dark etch. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the uh, neutralizing bath. Again, this is just... Uh, baking soda and water and you know just have to dip it for a few seconds to get it neutralized then I'm going to rinse it again and I like to rinse in warm water because it will uh, it'll dry off much faster now at this point you don't want to rub it you don't want to rub that black off that will actually set and become permanent
I want to take a uh, paper towel and just dab it, pat it down, because this is carbon steel, and you have just soaked it in acid. So if you don't get these dried off pretty quickly, it will rust very quickly. So once you're through etching, be sure and get them nice and dry. Then you just want to let them sit for a couple hours and let that, uh, that color really set. And as it dries, it'll dull down a little bit. And uh, you, can, uh, you can just hit it real lightly on the buffer to shine it up. Uh, you can uh, spray it down with something like WD-40 that will really nicely, or some, you know, any kind of oil that'll shine it up again. Some people actually uh, spray a coat of clear acrylic paint on them. I don't like that. I don't like any coating that could flake off, peel off of the blade. So personally, I don't do that, but uh, there are some who do. Okay, let's pull number two out of here. It's one of my little coffin style daggers. Give it a quick rinse. Oh yeah, that's looking real nice. Nice pattern on that one. I love how where you can see in the grinds, actually in the edge grind where you go down through the layers and you really see the that neat pattern in there. That's a nice pattern in it. I love when that uh, that wave pattern follows the blade, especially down in, in the grind. And I know in the video you can't really see how deep this is etched. I mean, if you ran your thumbnail across it, you would actually feel a little difference, a little, feel the layers in it. And again, you know, if I left it in for an hour or two, I could get a much, much deeper etch. But uh, this is about the way I like them right here. This is one of my little neck knives with some raindrop pattern Damascus. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. I like that. I'll put a real nice handle, probably some exotic gemstone on that. That's going to be a beauty. Do a little file work on it there. Little vine file work, you can see that brought that out really nicely. That's nice. And I think we've got one more hiding in here. Yeah, my little push dagger. This is a, uh, what they call a random pattern Damascus. Now, I've been using Brad Vice's Alabama Damascus for three or four years now. Uh, great guy to work with, really knows what he's doing with this stuff. It has performed very well for me. It holds up well, takes a nice edge, good stuff. Um, so. And very reasonable too, really. Uh, so if you need some Damascus, give Brad Vice at uh, Alabama, Alabama Damascus a call. He'll take good care of you. Wonderful guy to work with. If you need some advice, any uh, tips on how to work with it, he'll be happy to help you out. All 
Okay, so here's what we did today. Turned up very nice, I think. You know, sometimes I'll take these after I've uh, etched them and actually come back and re-grind the cutting grind, which will, you know, take away the Damascus pattern. It will, you know, make it shiny like stainless steel, but it's a nice contrast sometimes. But most of the time I prefer to leave it where you see the uh, Damascus pattern in it. Of course, if you ever do, you know, screw up on anything, you can always grind it down and start over again. Okay, I've let this set for a while. You know, let the uh, black actually set nice and permanently. And it looks pretty good now, but uh, it is a little bit dull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 600 grit sandpaper and just lightly go over that. I'm using very light pressure. And what that's doing is the nickel, the silver here is nickel. Um, the acid does not attack it like it does the carbon steel. So the nickel will be the high spots. So actually that's what I'm doing is I'm just polishing up the high spots which happens to be the nickel and it's really going to brighten that up and make it stand out. There's what we have now. Now I'm just going to give this a real light buffing on a, on a soft cotton wheel. And we'll show you what we have then. Again, I'm doing this very lightly. Just a few seconds. Because you can, uh, you know, polish that black out of it. Which... Uh, it can give you a neat effect too, it gives you more of a silver finish than the black finish. And there you have our finished Damascus blade. This is ready to put handles on it. See my vine file works, it stands out really nicely. Beautiful raindrop pattern on it. This is Mike Carter with Mike Carter Custom Knives, cartercrafts.com. Thanks for watching.